Pro tip, when you're getting ready to do binding on an instrument or on a box or on anything that you're, you're putting work, putting time and effort into, I recommend that you use this wrench and you tighten this thing. And they don't have to tighten it. You don't have to tighten it to death, but it needs to be tight. You don't want this thing to move as you are cutting into this thing that you put so much time and money into. Is on the guitar surface to always be to be this line right here, you know, perpendicular to my cut. My cut is is roughly this. This is how much I'm going to cut out of here. So if we um, if I rotate my cutting edge to where it's going to be, it's not exactly where it's going to be. It's like it kind of falls it like in that area. So you can see we're going to cut a pretty substantial chunk out of that. I hope I hope I'm getting this on here. Uh, I'm going to cut. Actually, well, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to film it. We'll see. And this block being movable like it is gives you a lot of a lot of ability to set it. So what I'm going to do here is tighten the thumb screw up. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm tightening these two up. And and this is designed, this block is designed so that it's locked in three different places. So as long as, as long as you've tightened it up, it's not going to move. You know, the thing about this is, this is not nearly as awkward, but I'm trying to film it. So you've got this camera like right in front of me. Okay. Now I'm going to use the, the a screwdriver just to back this and that thumb up some more nice okay that's nice and tight anyway so there's my starting point now I've tightened everything using the screwdriver to back it up I haven't set my height yet so let's set height next now what I want to do okay here's the thing that really bothers me it bothers me that I have such a good glue glue joint and that I'm going to basically cut it away, just 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 destroy it. I'm not going to do that. My first two cuts, or my first two pieces, I actually want to cut a little bit less. I want to put them in like, oh, sort of like that. Like maybe cut two thirds of the top down, and let half of the let half of that hang over the top. I don't care. I'll plane that off. That doesn't bother me to plane that off because that way I save my seam. I think it's more important to save my seam than it is to cut the seam and make it easier. I'd rather spend more time planing, planing the um, binding down because there's still plenty of binding to do what needs to do. Then the last piece of binding that I put on will be, will be, you know, this full thickness or maybe just a little bit less than that full thickness. That way I'm covering that seam. But doing so, I, I should, save the integrity of that joint. Okay, so my camera always wants to die on me. It always um, it always always does. So I made my first cut. Actually I've I've um what this cut is just so you know what I'm doing. This cut is three um three pieces of this binding deep but only about half high. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to make one more cut that is high. That way I save the integrity of my, of, of my seam because I'm just real picky about that. So what I'll have is a cut like this. Notice I've did a test piece here. These two pieces are going to be you know, pretty, pretty damn tall as you can see there. So there's, there's what I'm doing. I'll do a little more of it.
All right, I'm gonna do one more tiny adjustment. I'm gonna cut just a tiny bit thicker. See what I'm finding is that this line is a little bit, a little, I like, the, by the way, these fuzzy things are good to keep on here because they help fill that gap. So don't be, you're, you'll, you'll be tempted to get rid of these fuzzies and don't do it, leave them there. They're handy, but they do get in the way. You have to kind of get them out of the way. So this double line is just a tiny bit thick, probably a couple thousand, I mean, just a tiny bit thicker than it needs to be. This line's a tiny bit thinner than it needs to be. And when I'm, you, I guess, I don't know, I hope you can see what I'm talking about. So I want to take just a teeny bit more off this line. I don't know if we can actually see it. And keep in mind that there will be glue holding these together, but so you can see how, how close that is. That's pretty close there, but it's just a little bit thick. We could take a tiny bit more out and we could add just a, a tiny bit to that line. And by the way, see this goop on here? This is from the tape. Um, I'm going to have to wipe that off with a rag because this stuff is really susceptible to, to um, thinner. It also doesn't want to stay on the table. And, uh, so what I'm going to do now with that advice or with that information in hand is, by the way, adjusting this, just unplug it. If it's a cordless one, well, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to do. You could actually take it out if you were that concerned about it. The point is, is don't cut yourself. So, so whatever it takes to do that. So I'm going to loosen this. There's the edge of the cut. And then there's the other to the cut. So that's the cut that I'm going to make. So by the time I'm done going around this, which is probably about four and a half feet, I'm going to have probably trimmed less than a tenth of a gram off of this guitar. But it's important. It's an important thing. So anyway, let's get to going. Will this guitar or will this camera last? I don't know. Let's we'll find out. I'm not sure what I'm going to show you. I mean, I cut so little off, it's just a matter of a difference in the sand. Yeah, you can see it's a little bit deeper. So it's a little bit, a little bit nicer. If you're doing a sharp, sharp edge, um, like a sharp edge horn of a guitar, um, and you roll up to, let's say, the edge of the horn, right? You roll up to the edge of the horn. And you can see that that bearing, you start to see the bearing down there on the, that edge. So you just follow through, just, just continue on like that. Don't try to come around the corner. Don't do that. Just keep, keep them simple. Don't try to do too much in one shot because you'll end up screwing up and you'll be unhappy. And I don't want you to be unhappy. I may never meet you, but I want you to be happy and have fun building whatever it is that you're building. All right, I'm going to glue some stuff down, so goodbye, and I'm going to get high on some glue fumes. Continuing on, here we go, we've got my first two pieces put on. And you can see what I did was I have this stepped cut, and I put these two pieces on first. Um, so, and they look, of course, nasty like they should, but now I'll... I will um, fix, clean up this edge, and I, I might even knock it down. 
Actually, I probably will knock it down. But first I'll see if I can just clean the edge up. And then we'll go ahead and put this last piece on. Right, which is what we're wanting. And it will go down further. It'll go down here to this level. Um, thereby leaving my nice glue joint um, intact. But covering up this the um, actual joint. So I'm going to knock this down. That'll be my next thing. I'll probably use a plane. I'll just come in and trim it down, or I might even I might even use a some sort of route. <coughs> excuse me, routing kind of tool. I might even use a little <coughs> a Dremel accessory. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, I might film it. I might not. But anyway, so we're just moving along here. Hello. So I have 39 pieces of tape here. I've just pulled this tape off. And this is the rough result. You can see that my first inner inner two pieces were were, were um, sanded flush. And then I went ahead with the same setting that I had used to do this outside piece. And I hit it one more time, which thinned out this black line just a little bit. But probably... And I believe this is one millimeter. I know, millimeters. Damn it. Anyway, um, so it thinned the line out, which I like actually quite a bit. This all gets sanded. Um, let's take a look at it around here to see what kind of a kind of a, a mess I have got. This looks really, really good. I am pleased with it. Let's Stuck something. Now I'm using for a for a um, an adhesive two different things. I'm using a um, plastic cement, which is basically just a thinner, really plastic cement. And I this is the first time that I've used this on this guitar. I've used different materials in the past, um, and I'm using this, which is an emblem adhesive. It's clear. This is interesting stuff. I wanted to see what it, how it worked on the guitar because it really withstands and holds up well. Um, when I build LED lighting, I use this adhesive, and it lasts forever. It seems to be seems to be pretty good stuff. So I'm liking this. It, it does stick well. It holds it good. Um, I'm thinking we're okay. And you can see here where where the black is sort of puddled right you, you can tell that the glue actually does melt the adhesive um, or the glue melts the material the pvc and allows it to stick together so really it binds um, a whole lot like plumbing if you're putting pvc piping it's the same same principle you're actually turning several different pieces into one piece you're you're, you're adhering them together making them into one piece so that's what this is supposed to do anyway that's looking good I'll save these if I can if I can get get busy and get the binding on the back done and I'll probably do a similar type of a thing on the back. I might go for a wider black um, strip on the back. I might not. But it would be nice I could just go ahead and reuse these. There's no reason not to. I mean, I've already taken them apart and the toughest thing really about putting this binding on I think is 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 using tape, putting the tape on. So if you have the tape ready to go, it's really handy. And um, this tape is, it's, it's not bad. It works pretty good. So anyway, um, there you go. I'll, I'll plug 3M Automotive Refinish Masking Tape. It seems to have sticky. This is, these have been used twice now. I used this bunch of tape to hold the first two pieces in. And then I pulled that off and put, the, you know, put the, this, this outside white piece on and reapplied that tape. And then added a couple pieces. So... So it appears that it does pretty good. I hope, by the way, that I'm not moving the camera around too much. I just become aware that I do that. Um, I try not to. I actually try not to move the camera much. I'm not much of a cameraman. And I, I get focused on what I'm doing and forget that I'm moving the camera around and I'm throwing the camera around and I, I don't need to, so I apologize. But I am now going to, with my sanding blocks, or maybe I might use one of my Sanders, go ahead and knock this down, knock this flush, clean all this stuff up, which will clean up pretty nicely. 
clean these edges here. I want to get those those edges out so I don't grab them, so I don't mess things up. But I'll get it knocked down to to level, and I, I may not finish sand it, but I'll still get it closer. I'll get it close to what it needs to be. That way, it will have less tendency to hang and, and you know become an issue. Um, yeah, the sides, by the way, are there, there's it worked out really well. It's just a tiny bit high, and and I like that because it even though this does sand easily, it sets relatively soft material. It does take quite a bit of effort to sand it. So. I'm glad I don't have to sand a bunch of it away. Plus, I put it on because it looks nice. I would like it to look nice. But also, it's not. It's beyond looking nice. It's also a hard protective edge that's more forgiving than the wood edge. Or if it's if it's wood binding, it's still more. It's just a tougher piece of material because now it's laminated, and that makes it a lot tougher. So anyway, all right, that's a good enough thing. I'm going to finish this up. Checking in. Going in. No, don't go in there. No, don't do it. Don't do it. No, come back. Come back. What are you doing? I'm trying to show you something. Quit going places where you shouldn't be going. All right. Here we are looking at the binding getting flushed. Mm, pretty damn close everywhere but right here and I thought this would be a good time to show you some of the tools that I use this is really handy isn't it ugly it's just something laying around that we were using one day I guess a few years ago and it stuck this is a nice one also it's, I think it's probably 120 grit stuck on this tube I really like this one also this is a half Basically, it's just a semicircle, half circle, and it, it helps. So you can kind of rock this one back and forth a little bit better than you can this one. But they all have their, their places, you know. Um, I could use other things. I could use a blade in here to, to skim that down, and I have some, but it's... I don't know. I'd rather just go ahead and, and, and be slower about it. Use this curved gadget. It helps me. It, it helps me um, keep. It helps me keep my contours right if I use this. Um, what I'll probably do is I'll go ahead with this finer grit, which is probably a 60 grit, and I'll clean this up and just, it'll be kind of scratchy looking. But I'll knock this down quite a bit, then I'll flip it over to this, I think, 120 grit and hit it a little bit. Then I'll probably finish it up with this one, which I think is 120. This might even be 180 grit on this on this guy. Yeah, I think it might be. So anyway, you know, just having the right shape is certainly helpful. I was able to, with the orbital sander and going at a slow speed, knock this down and also knock this down. I, there's a bit of an edge on here right now that will go away I am I'm getting ready to to do the back of this guitar so rather than starting on the instrument start on a piece of scrap and here are my here are my three pieces of binding that my first setting is deep. I've made that almost a millimeter deep. We're dealing with millimeters here, damn it. Right now it's about a millimeter too deep. I'm going to make it a little bit less than that. I'm probably gonna half that and, and try to go half a millimeter deep. This is for my first cut. My final cut will, I'll, I'll, I'll set that. But this gets my first two pieces in and I'm doing the same thing. I'm raising my cut a little bit above the height of my of my glue joint so I can leave my glue joint there because it's a it's a good glue joint and I don't want to cut it out of there. That just bothers me.
there's a bit of a curve here, so I'm, I'm having to I'm having to be careful to get it, get it right here. Um, but as I go around here, I, I find the curves or whatever. Um, I'm liking what's going on here. That is interesting. Yeah, that's it's about exactly where it needs to be. Alrighty. So this is my initial cut. This looking really good. We're going around here with a, a pretty equidistant um, equal <laughs> an equal, okay, equal trough. And we get over here and that trough gets narrow. And you might be wondering why. And the answer is this is why. This actually goes from being relatively at 90 degrees to about 85 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this just a little bit deeper and I'm going to cut to here and I'm going to cut to here. I'm going to put tape here. I might cut actually about to here and then I'll use a sander to um, knock that. I'll have a, a point here, you know, because I'll cut this in a bit of point here and I'll use a sanding block and I'll just knock that point round that way these um, this this edge will look right um, so anyway there, it will be it will be um, the right the right measurement I didn't pay attention to what I was doing and I fell off and cut that deeper. Now the nice thing about that is that I'm going to make a deeper cut to put my end on so that's not an issue but the bad thing about that is that, that I did it in the first place so I got to be careful. It's easy to mess up. It's easy to fix the mistakes for the most part but it's better not to mess up to begin with. Alright so I'm going to I'm going to sand these level because they're pretty good now. So what I'll do is just sand this little area here and this little area here so it corresponds to that cut. Alrighty, so I, um, I tape this on my three pieces even though I'm only going to put two pieces on to begin with. However, I taped them on and I got my heat gun out and I heated this up until it was pretty hot, until this relaxed. So that way I can put somewhat of a, a curve into it so it gives us a memory. When I put it back on and when I glue it, it's going to go on a lot better. So that, by the way, while I'm waiting for this to cool because I don't want to glue it till it cools, it expands quite a bit when it gets hot. Um, so it's about there, but I spent time putting extra pieces of tape around this. I just like using regular old masking tape, or, or maybe not, maybe it's um, fancy automotive refinish masking tape. <laughs> Whatever, it works good, and it, it withstands heat pretty well, and it, it just it works, I like it. I, I, don't, I, I don't have an issue using it. And I don't have an issue spending, I don't know what, like a buck, I guess, on this tape, maybe 50 cents, I don't know what it is, it's not much. But using a lot of it, and then I have it here, so as as I put it on, if I need to put more tape on it, I will. And the, the um, adhesive that I'm using really sticks well. It really holds it in place good, so I like that. Um, and what I'll do, by the way, is I'll use the adhesive to stick this first piece on against the, the wood. 
this white piece and then the black piece I'll go ahead and put them both on at the same time the white and black piece but not glued together then when I get it taped in I'll use this little bottle of um, plastic cement and and by the way you can use plumbing primer too if you well, obviously get the clear stuff don't get the purple stuff well, I mean unless you want purple purple PVC you, you should probably know but so um, anyway that's what I'm doing now and I just thought I'd update you um, because that's why I guess I've got this camera out and making this video well for a couple reasons I'm doing a guitar and then arising from the guitar is doing a little instructional um, you know video on this gadget which if you're watching the guitar video watch it or not I don't care I do care of course I do care whenever I say I don't care I do care okay time to go do something else for a while this has just been taped up using this which I'm, I'm liking so far Seems to stick pretty good. Um, it doesn't eat up the plastic much. It does. It does have a little bit of tooth to it, though. That's good. It needs to be some some um, interaction, I guess. Seems to, to adhere well to the wood, so I'm pleased. Okay. First application looking pretty good. So you might like to see what they look what it looks like. Um, just applied, it always looks sloppy and yucky. Cleans up really nice though, so that's what I'm gonna do there. I have my two inner pieces of binding sanded down and glued together. Yeah, so I have spots that I need to do some more sanding on. And I have some spots that are probably that I'll have to deal with that got have some black in them that I had one spot that didn't glue, easy to fix. So, but I'm taking a look at that, that from from what it began, you know, what it looked like in the beginning to what it looks like now is much improved. So, and that's just how it works, you know. But it's if you've never done it, this should give you comfort when you, when you first. My first binding job looked horrible. It was just I had fingerprints. I was using a more a more volatile glue. I had PVC fingerprints all over the guitar. I mean, everywhere while I was grabbing it. Um, it was really bad. Anyway, but it ended up looking really nice. So, so it's just you know, it's the nature of the beast. So, I have my final cut made. Notice I have a, a spot that I actually I I, I um, increased my depth, and I came in to this point and stopped. I put a piece of tape here. Did the same thing here. There's a piece of tape I stopped. Then I looked at my depth and decided to do it one more time. So I increased my depth just a little bit more and stopped there and stopped there. So that way I'm I'm working my way to the thickness here. Now I'm going to do the rest of this by hand. That'll be easy to just knock out with a uh, with a file. Of course, I prefer a sandpaper file. I will use. Let's see. I have a bunch to choose from. I will probably use this one to begin. That's a really nice, nice um, one to use that I can I can stay at a 90 degree. You know, I, I can I can set it like so and work that top out, and then I can turn it and then I can work my depth, or if I need to. All right. All taped. Last piece of, of binding is on. Over the top crowd just a little bit, which is exactly where I want it. And it's pretty close around the edges. I'll have some places I'm gonna have some sanding to do on the binding. Some places I'm going to have sanding to do on, on the wood. Just wanted you to notice that. Plus I'll wash my hat. Um, this is the, this is the, um, the result. The binding result. And it looks really good. You can see that I've sanded a little bit of that outer edge. 
deeper in some spots, and that was that's just 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 how it goes. Maybe my angle is a little bit wide here, so I thought it would be interesting to try a narrower angle. Thus, I've got this guy, which is the same thing, but you notice the difference in the angle. It's probably substantial, actually. It's probably about a 20 degree difference, 20 degree tighter of an angle. And so where this frame, and then I, there's my balancing point there, you can see that there's not a whole lot of it sitting on this curve, but it works fine for a straight edge. But this frame, look at that. I mean, we have, we have so much more, more material setting setting on the instrument. I like this. It's, it's really, it, it's useful. However, for binding purposes, this is a lot nicer. And I'm, I'm, um, I'm happy with that. But this also takes time to, you know, to develop. And, and this is kind of what Old Town does. It's not often that the things that I do videos about are also things I'm doing a business thing about and this really isn't a commercial but it is something that I sell and you know I'm just <laughs> it's interesting because you can see me you can watch this video and see how this thing sort of developed because you know for you a few minutes ago you saw me running this thing running this frame and you probably noticed that that it sets kind of there's not a lot of footprint on top of that of, the, of those curves so um, out of that came this and like I said, about two months later, but this is much nicer. Um, so it, you you have the ability, I have the ability. <laughs> whoever uses this has the ability to, um, to 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 actually get around some pretty tight corners. Now this is the back of this guitar. If you look at it, if you can see what I'm seeing, you'll see that this flat surface here. Let's just call that reference surface, right? And then if you look at this surface, you can see it's really angled steep. Um, let's take a look at this. Look at the angle on that. That is pretty serious. I assumed it might have been, I was guessing that it might be um, like five degrees, but I think it's quite a bit bigger than that. I'm going to try to figure this out, what this degree is. The, the point is, is that you saw me with with this little frame, um, work around these areas and do a fine job. And I stopped and I taped here and here and I did a little bit more cutting um, to compensate for this angle because it, it makes the, bear, it, the bearing won't contact the surface fully. So it kicks out a little bit. Point being is that it was a real easy fix. It took me, I would say, all in all, because of the angle of the back, probably cost me an extra 15 minutes of work. And that work went in to taking a sander, well, making this cut, extra cut, and then taking a sander and just straightening my, my, um, my slot for the binding, which is what I've done here. And it's so easy to do. Anyway, I just wanted to, to point that out. Okay, so you see my square. I have some angle numbers on it, and there's my pivot point. Pivot point, angles. Okay, what I'm going to try to do here is show you the angle at which which this this is being this was being cut. And I take my pivot point down here. Um, no, let's see, six degrees. Okay, so. Okay, so this is a six degree. From what I what I can gather, this is a six degree cut. Keeping in mind that you can see just how steep that angle is. Anyway, all of this to. By the way, let's take take a look at at, at the result here. Um, it's really quite nice. I've got most of the sanding done. There are a couple spots that need to be sanded. Let's just look. I still left, I've left this area. 
Uh, I'm going to be doing some stuff here. I haven't haven't got to that obviously, um, but as you can see, the the area looks pretty good. I've got a little bit of sanding to do there, a little dink in that. Um, so for the most part, we're looking real good, and I also have to do something here. Some of the old jumbos have an interesting thing there. I thought I'd probably inlay a piece of maple, which is I think what they do. They make sort of a truncated um, triangle, I guess, and they lay that in, inlay that in here. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking. The neck needs to be taken care of. We'll get cooking on that.